Assalamu alaikum, I'm Hina Ijaz. Welcome to Pakistan. The guest I am introducing in today's show is a very, very interesting guest. Why? Because he came to Pakistan three years ago from Australia. But he didn't just, let's put it this way, in this part of the world, this wasn't his first time experience because a little far away, I, well not a little, it's quite a long flight, however, he does have some exposure about this side of the world. He has uh, worked in Cambodia, he has also worked in Vietnam. Um, he knows a little bit about our distant culture in a way. So I'm talking about Mr. Brendan. He is working currently at the Lahore American School. He got this opportunity, moved to Pakistan. He fell in love with the country and he fell in love with the job and he loves what he does. I welcome Mr. Brendan to the show. Hi. Hello. Thank you for joining. Thank you. It's lovely Can to be I here. say assalamu alaikum to you? Welcome assalamu Oh, good. You've learned a lot in three years. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and on the other side, I have uh, Mohammed Sajid Sahab. And uh, what can I say? He has uh, ample experience in his field. He's uh, been a permanent faculty member of the great Punjab University. It's quite an institution, quite a big name. He's been there since 2004. So I have two people from the education sector today. I feel a little, um, uh, let's say, inferior. <laughs> so there's a lot to talk about. Um, there's something in common here, yet there's not. So we're going to discuss all of that. Mr. Brendan's journey, three years. So can we hear your story, please? Uh, yes, certainly. Um, I arrived in Pakistan in the summer of 2018. I'd been teaching... Summer, that must be tough. It was very hot, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd been, I'd been living in, in, Asia, in Southeast Asia for around seven years. I was living in Vietnam for four right. years. I spent three years in Cambodia. And then I found my way here. Right, so it wasn't such a shock for you? It wasn't such a shock, no, but it was still There were shock <laughs> absorbers on the <laughs> there way. There were shock absorbers on the way, yes. <laughs> right, and uh, Sajid Sahib, right. Uh, Sajid Sahib, you've, um, you've had international exposure as well. Where all and where at? I have been to different countries. I've been to United States, Canada, Australia, you know, and to some European countries for conferences. Obviously, I'm from yes, academia, and I did my master's and PhD course from New York State University. Right. So I spent around four to five years in uh, in New York. Right. And then I was I was back to serve my institution. Right. We yeah. have um, this beautiful report prepared by the team on Australia, as per tradition in the show. Uh, wherever our guest hails from, we uh, prepare a report, so let's see it and when we return we shall talk much more about Australia with Mr. Brendan.
Right. So, you know, I've never had the opportunity to visit Australia. I hear great things about the great beaches here and, of course, the wildlife. Tell us about it, Mr. Brendan. Uh, well, Australia has lots of beautiful beaches. Um, where I'm from, in Adelaide, we have some wonderful beaches there, but all, all up and down the coast. Australia is a, a very big island, How much obviously. of that do you miss? Because uh, Pakistan yeah, that... is very unlike Australia, obviously. <laughs> yes, certainly. I would say that's one of the big things I miss, being in Lahore, obviously. I'm, I'm so, three years Australia. you've been here. How many times have you visited Australia? Um, twice. I, I was unfortunately, ha well, fortunately or unfortunately, had to return to Australia for about six months during when COVID sort of kicked started. in here. Started. When it started, yes. We, I was working remotely in oh. Australia during that time. Right. Which was quite difficult, but um, yeah, that's just those two times. Yes. Right, and I must congratulate you also on air because you got married recently. I certainly did, yes. So I you got found married. love in Pakistan, so <laughs> I, I believe did. Mr. Brendan isn't going anywhere. <laughs> Not for a while, no. <laughs> right, is that correct? Yeah, that's true, that's true. So, yes. how much have you fallen in love with the culture in Pakistan? Uh, or are you still adjusting to it? Um, well, adjusting a little bit, of course, because, you know, it's very different from my own. But um, I love it a lot. Um, I love the food here, I, the people. Um, I've had a chance to travel. A, a little bit around here, which I've Where all have you been? Um, in the northern areas mainly. I've been to Skadu a few times. Hunza, you have? Sithral, yeah, Peshawar. So you are the adventurous sort? Yes, sir. I, I like to. Yeah. You, you like, <laughs> I like to? to so <laughs> so the, the teaching experience, you taught in Australia as well, I believe. Um, I did my education in, in, in Australia, but I only have uh, taught um, abroad. So I right. taught in some international schools when I was in Vietnam and then in Cambodia also. So I how here. different are all, all of these school systems when you compare to your, your personal work yeah. experience? Um, quite similar, I would say. Uh, they're all international schools, so they, they have very similar curriculums and so forth. Um, and kids are kids, really, <laughs> no matter where they are in the world. So Really? You would say that? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> not much of a difference. There's not so much of a difference, you know, all the, yeah. Right, but it, it might be a little uh, frustrating by the end of the day. Sometimes <laughs> they can get on your nerves, right? That's all part of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can say for sure I'm a mother. <laughs> so, but you enjoy that. I do. I love it. Yes, very much. Right. So, w what things did you hear about Pakistan prior to your arrival here? Um, you, what kind of things? What I kind mean? of things? I, the food I'd heard a lot about. I'd, I, you know, you see things on the news. It, sometimes you see some negative things. Yes. Unfortunately. Um, which I've, you know, since found out. Did what, it frighten you? Not so much. Not so much. I, I, I've travelled a lot already, and, you, and I kind of know when to, you know, take those take things with a pinch of, pinch of salt. You know. When you you landed in Lahore, right? Mm, yes. When you came to Pakistan. Yes. yes. Uh, how did the first impressions change? If um, so. Yeah, they they changed quite quickly. Um, I, I realised that one of the first things I've really noticed here was how hospitable people have, are in Pakistan. And that's everywhere I've travelled in Pakistan. People are very hospitable. Um, uh, you know, people are always welcoming into my ho their homes, or you know, have a cup of chai with them, or, or anything like that. So that's been a very positive experience. With chai um, is, I think, um, something to do. We've got to put, give it some national title. Certainly, yes. National I, I, uh, drink. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> chai. So you're in love with chai. I do. Right. So, Sajid Saab, you've had a lot of international exposure. Have you ever been to Australia? Yeah, I, I have been there in Perth. Right. There's the Curtin University of Technology, so I went there. And it's a wonderful place, wonderful beaches, countryside is too good. You can see kangaroos and so many other things. Right. And that's a lovely place to visit. Right. Though we have a problem, we don't have, you know, direct flight, so we had to go to it's Bangkok. It's a long, long journey. Yeah, it's a long, long journey and you really feel so tired. So Mr. Brendan's just been there twice. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a tough thing though. You like rather yeah. avoid the journey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's a right. worth visiting place. I mean, the people are so good. Yes. Um, as compared to if I compare with uh, the people in the United States, because life is too, you know, busy there. People are different in Australia. They're cool and calm people. As, as for my mm -hmm. experience, because experiences vary from individual to individual. But I love being there. So are there any similarities between Australians and Pakistan, Pakistanis, if you were to draw any? Um, there are some, maybe being friendly, I think. Uh, yeah. Australians are, are usually quite friendly. Um, I think that's one of the big similarities, yes. Right. Yeah. And I, I think we take life a little too chilled in a... Mm. So, yeah. Relaxed we in yes, Lahore, yes, not so Karachi. No, no. Right. You've been to Karachi? Not yet. No, I'm actually going there. In a oh, few you weeks. must. You'll yes, see a massive difference mm, in a I've good way. Lahoris love to enjoy life. Yes, they certainly do. 
Karachi, Karachi, I <laughs> also do. Mm. However, it's a metropolitan city. It's busy. It's faster. Yes. Yeah, I'll so. be visiting there in, in March, actually. We will be. Yes. So there'll be a whole different uh, world that you'll be uh, viewing. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You're looking forward mm. to that. So you have been to Skardu mm -hmm. and which other areas in Pakistan? Uh, uh, Skardu, uh, Hunza, um, and the Sitral, um, and Peshawar. And a little and so what? Okay. And is on board. So I think he's pretty much covered the yep. bell, Sajid sir. Oh, what yeah. else would you recommend to Mr. Brendan sir? Um, towards northern area, further towards Swat, towards Malam Jabba. He seems and adventurous, kind. So right, come on, let's right, be a little right. adventurous and, here. And, and then you should, uh, you can try the coastal belt, which starts from Karachi to Gowadar. That's wonderful. That place. might be a little uh, yeah. hint of Australia there. Yes, I, I've heard a lot about that. I've seen some beautiful pictures and yes. that book, yeah. And they've developed some five star resorts mm. there. And, uh, but Mr. Brendan, have, has there ever been a bad experience in Pakistan? It could be about anything, I don't know. Three years, that's a long time. Bad experiences, not, nothing serious, no seriously bad experiences. I mean, you know, some bad traffic here and there, and things like that, but mm -hmm. I've never had a, a, a experience where I felt unsafe or anything like that. Were you so, ever no. treated differently? Did you feel so? Um, not in a negative way, no. I've in never, a good way? In a good way. I, uh, I mean, quite often if I go to places, you know, often people want to come up and take selfies <laughs> and things. Um, but, you know, but it's always... But that happens to a lot of foreigners it, here. Yes. I, if I, you actually go to the interior mm. city or the old yes, Lahore... Yes, in the old city it does it happen. They want lot, pictures yeah. with you, yes. even in the up, up northern areas. Mm, yes, they do. <laughs> right? Not sure why, but... So you feel like a celebrity <laughs> I feel like a little bit like a celebrity, yeah. So do you have plans of staying here for the long run? Uh, definitely for the time being, yes, in the next couple of years. Right. Sure. And what about uh, the work environment, work ethics? Do you feel this, uh, they are in line with the international standards? Um, I, th I think so. I think uh, uh, where I work, people are. Um, it's a, probably a different, a uh, little bit more of a laid back attitude to uh, hmm. work sometimes. Definitely sometimes. Punctuality, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we Pakistanis do have a habit of not being on time. Yes, yeah. No, so. If I may count myself <laughs> in. <laughs> Very generously. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Brendan, uh, adjust, adjusting to a new environment. Of course, you'd been in Cambodia, in Vietnam, but of course, these are different places. That's right. Uh, different lifestyles, different cultures, different personalities, because you see, every nation has a different set of personality traits as well, or characteristics. So, how difficult was it to adjust here? I, I personally didn't find it very difficult at all. Um, I, I enjoy you know, new experiences and enjoy being somewhere that's a bit out of, you know, comfort zone type thing. So I, I didn't find it very difficult. You didn't? Uh, no. I think maybe if I'd just come straight from Australia and never really traveled abroad, perhaps it would have been more difficult. But right, yeah, right. I, 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 I enjoy the, the, you know, the challenge. And what do you like eating the most here? Oh, I, I love desi I, I You do? I love, oh, absolutely. No yes. way. Yes, I certainly do. So uh, what kind of cuisine did you have in Australia, Sajid um, sir? I had like, because like I have Pakistani families there, okay. so, more, so you cause, again cause, had Pakistani. Yeah, I had that's the same. Why, why, while Come I on. was, because I don't, because I, because no. I don't like, you know, I just like Thai food. Because when I, I went, understand, yeah. But you went to Australia, you should but, have tried some. Yeah, Thai I mean, it's, it's it's common fast food you take everywhere you go. Right. But I don't like that, so I just love desi food, and I just you know opt for desi food every. Even so, in New York, so I used to have that. If he was to visit Australia again, what would you recommend to him? Yeah, uh, Australian food Please is. Please don't say McDonald's. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, Australians are, f are famous for barbecues. They're a little bit, it's different than a desi bar barbecues, right. but yeah. sausages and um, lamb chops, lots of lamb. Mm -hmm. So you're big into meat, big time into oh, meat. Oh, I, I like uh, vegetables and, and meat. But, oh, yeah, I, but I Australians in general are meat lovers. Quite, yes, quite often, yes. Right, so As oh, let's not uh, <laughs> forget about uh, farming in Australia. The Australian yes. cows are so popular, people yes. have been importing them here. Yes. Right, Sajid sir? Right, I have been trying Mexican food and all other. Right. And in a, but in Australia, um, I had been to Arabian restaurants there and <laughs> Desi restaurants. But that right. was good. I'm going to take a short break and we shall continue the discussion upon my return. See you shortly. Right, so Mr. Brendan, what makes the perfect student? What makes the perfect student? 
If I if I knew, then I uh, I would be I would I'd be a millionaire by now. Okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, let's come up with the formula now. <laughs> it's never too late. Never too late. Um, one that um, listens to the teacher, one that does all their work. Right. But one that's very curious and. No, I um, I want her students <laughs> to listen to that. <laughs> Yeah, one that's very curious and one that loves to learn and... Um, Willing to learn. Yeah. I mean, there's no such thing as a perfect student. I think that's what makes teaching What's enjoyable. a good student then? A good student is, well, all of those qualities, I think, if, you know, if they're... Uh, if, they, if they enjoy being at school, I think that usually makes them become a good student. So I don't think that's part of teaching. Is to... Right. And were you a good student? Um, I'm probably not the right person to ask. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? What What does your self-assessment I, I, say? I think I think overall I was I was okay. So like Ajita, were you a good student? You must have been. I I, I'm sure. I don't know. I have a feeling. Yeah, I have been very good student, very hardworking. But when I went to New York, I realized that a good student is like who you know creates a balance between his studies and sports and co-curriculars, because that's something. In, you know, given much importance, they were not in our country. Do you think it's the it's the responsibility of uh, the education institu educational institution to carve out a child's personality and make uh, the school the good place yeah. for the student? Yeah, it, it it really depends. Like we have bunch of private to make institutions. Them enjoy school, let's put yeah, it that. we have bunch of private institutions and government institutions, and yes. they're very they're they're pulled that, apart. There's a vast difference. Yeah. Obviously. So um, in in government institutions, there's less you know attention towards these things, towards co-curricular and towards uh, sports. But in private, they are better. Like I'm, I was talking about HSN and other. Since I'm teaching in university at a university level, we give them ample opportunity. So we are at par with international standards. Uh, but I doubt if our government institutions are private. Can you easily or safely say that a student from Punjab University mm -hmm. can compete with any international student yes, from any obviously. other college? Obviously they can. Like I as a student graduated from government college university and went, I went to New York to study and I have been doing good there. So um, our, our universities are good enough where students can compete with the international standards. How well are your students doing abroad? I was good. I was very good. I mean, I had very good you CGPA. Have examples of some? Um, obviously. High achievers. I'm sure you have a list. I mean, we have a list of vice chancellors here in Pakistan. Uh, you know, majority of them I'm are. Talking about the ones working abroad. Ones working abroad. Yeah. yeah. The ones who graduated from Punjab University and made Pakistan. I have abroad. my own student who, who is now working with the Brooking Institution. You, you see, the Moed Yusuf is there. You can find plenty of other examples. Excellent. Yeah. That's good to hear. Mm -hmm. And to hear. two of my students are studying there. They're doing job. Probably they're going to settle there. So it really again depends um, in, which, in which institution you are, what are your interests, and then you find a compatible job there or not. Because like some fields are there where you don't find job and you come back. But there are a few fields where you get a job. I know my student who studied from Lums and uh, then she did PhD and right now she's with the Apple and getting wow, uh, that's around. Uh, she's getting wonderful salary and they are uh, working for a car and she's working into the batteries um, right. and solar system. So yes, there are plenty of students Brilliant. who are working there. Brilliant. Yeah. So Sajisa, what do you think when we have um, an international candidate come to Pakistan, work here. Do we, as Pakistanis, make life e try and make life easier for them and the workplace a good work environment for them? Yeah, and I especially I'm talking about fem female candidates coming um, to Pakistan. I don't think. I, mean, I think. We Do we living, help them settle down here? Yeah, everybody. Well, like if I talk about my institution, everybody yeah. would try to help you out. Be no, it a student. For foreigners to come here yeah, and settle down yeah, here. Yeah, I mean be it a student, teachers, everybody, you know, this society respects them and takes them as you, you were talking with him as celebrity and you help them. Uh, I think they can adjust. I had a student from um, do we help Nepal. Them do we help them adjust? Yes, we did. We do. We try. We try. We try because the barrier is the language barrier, right? No, when not really, because I think every Pakistani can just uh, can speak basic English. Even the taxi driver, you can easily. I mean, if you hop no, into no, no, a taxi, but, but you, when, it's very easy. I'm you not know, talking yes, about yes, no. How are you? Where do you want to right, go? Right. I'm not talking about like 
within the academic institution but when they inter- interact with the society they might have some problem right but within the academic because institution the yes colo- we have col- colonial uh, influence or the fact of everybody knows basic english um more or less i tend to yes, disagree no a bit yes no is basic <laughs> how I mean, are you where what depends we, which we community you are interacting with i mean if you are with the less educated then there might be some problem other with with the majority you are comforted but he can reply better yes, on okay, this yes okay yes mr yeah. brendan what do you he think do you think basic english is pretty much common um is certainly in lahore i i think overall i've i've usually found that um in some of the more remote areas um not so much not so much no, no, yeah but, so but yeah. you mainly in the urban areas in the urban so, areas certainly yeah. yes yeah so w- what's your favorite activity in lahore my favorite i'm sure after uh, work you must be exhausted but there must be something that you activity. enjoy i would say one of my favorite things to do in lahore is to go out to eat I really enjoy going to and, dip, uh, finding different food. restaurants. Yes, I love I absolutely love this. Right. Yeah. So have you been to Old Lahore? I've been to Old Lahore, yes. And you've seen the mosque and yes, everything. Yes, absolutely, a number of times, yes. I actually had my um one of my uh my Velima at oh. and Andal's restaurant. Oh, oh that's yeah. a, they have a view of the mosque Beautiful as well. View, yes. Amazing. Mm. Amazing. Did your family fly down or no? Um only some of my family were made, able to make. My mother came and one of my brothers. And what did they it. think of Pakistan? They loved it, yeah. They my my mother actually came came here before. She was here about oh. two years ago, just before COVID. So she um, was familiar. Yeah, she's a big traveler. She's been to many places, so she was excited to come back. Right, yeah. right. So you've been to Australia twice. Let's say if you get a better opportunity to go back and work in Australia, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Depends how good the opportunity was. <laughs> uh, no, not at this stage. No, I, I, not right I'm quite up. No, I'm certainly not ready to go back. Right, mm. right. So that's good to hear that. Good to hear. <laughs> so we have a good teacher staying here. So Sajid Sab, um, I would like to ask you, what makes a good student? yeah a student who is um, who is very clear in his objective what he want to do what are his favorite subjects and you want to focus on them and want to specialize on them a student who actually you know creates it's focused basically. yeah yeah focused plus a balance between the sports studies and co curricular i mean he should not just be you know bookworm right. student i right. mean but be. what i'm trying to get at is um that uh, with all the social media influence nowadays right. a lot of children a lot of school children college students are really diverted towards the world of internet and right. nfts now and etc etc that's taking away a lot of their attention span yes. the atten- the concentration span is um, is 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 getting contracted yeah but at the same time these things are helpful as well like a well, student can well if you can, constructive uh, yeah i mean a student can just view the documentaries uh, he can uh, you know do research on subjects so related to whatever researching on tabs i tell you i, I teach graduate and undergraduate students so they are into it i'm not talking about the <laughs> kids actually good students. <laughs> yeah no i mean it really depends again uh, the type of student and his interests so i'm just uh, you talked about the good students so right. they are into these things if they really want to excel and i always you know um uh, convince my students to you know uh, have a clear objective be focused go abroad study here but you should have a clear line of action what you want to do in future right mr brendan i'm sure you have a couple of observations being here for 3 years uh but you uh, associated with the american board however i'm sure you must have been observing the overall education sector in pakistan what reforms should be introduced to further strengthen the system or let's say put uh, let's say take it towards betterment um i guess the uh, probably some more emphasis on um you know the sc- schools that don't have as much funding i mean obviously the school that i work at you know has has the funding to be able to you know give the kids a good right. education but you know that the there are lots of people that can't afford to go to those you know, types of schools and if there was more funding put into you know some of the the public type sector hmm. of schools you know to really give those those kids a chance to get a good education right hmm. right and um, what other reforms do you think should be brought in um fine funding is one part what yeah else? funding is one part um I mean I, I from what of what I've observed and it's obviously from an outside view right perhaps a, a, a more of a focus on um on English as well as a as a 
English medium as, uh, Absolutely. in schools. Um, I think that would certainly help. That you would know, certainly and, and, help. And in all schools, not just. Right. So the average quality of a Pakistani student, I'm just not talking about your mm. school here, an average Pakistani student, yes. how would you compare them to an average international student? I would say because the, a lot of these student, uh, students haven't had the opportunities that some of the other international students have had, then it's, you know, their, their education would be lower overall. You know, just because they don't have the opportunities that some of the other kids have. Right, yeah. right. Well, on that note, we're going to go towards a short break and we'll see you shortly. Right, Sajid Saab, I was having this very interesting conversation with you off the record, but I'd like to bring it on the record. Um, schooling has the schooling system or the systems within the system they've generally improved over the years in Pakistan definitely for sure right. however we do see some discrepancies some um, uh, variations rather mm -hmm. one is the British system then the American system nothing against any system love both the systems they're amazing but obviously I believe every um, student is a product of the school itself uh, teachers have a great role in shaping students up. So what do you have to say about this disparity in the system? Yeah, I mean, if you see in the British system, the student takes, you know, much opportunity in O levels and A levels. They are, they are opting for eight subjects and they know well what they want to opt for. And then they go into undergrad program like BS political science, BS economics, BS engineering or whatsoever. Um, on the contrary, in United States, you go for high school, you learn the basic concepts and then you go for BS general program and then you take four minors and majors and then you understand or uh, learn about the subject and you specialize in it. We have actually two type of systems. In some schools we have O levels and A levels. Those students are really good and they can go directly into a specialized BS program of one subject. But the kids coming from uh, you know government schools and government colleges, right. they don't know about many subjects and they are asked to opt for a subject which they don't know even. Right. So we have to streamline, either we have to opt for, you know, uh, the British system from the school to the university level or from, for the American system from school, so that the students actually just learn and then they know what they are doing. Sajid Sahib, I'd like to bring a point up, a very relevant point. I don't know it's ever been discussed, I don't think it's ever been actually discussed. But I'd like to pinpoint today, a student who does O levels, mm -hmm. he or she, when they enroll for a college uh, or into a college or a, a university, at that stage, their overall um, their overall marks are uh, are converted, yeah. uh, and it's called an equivalency, right, right. something of that so sort. So marks are reduced. So right? them their overall average is reduced by a ten percent. Right. Why? But, but again. Why? Why? Why is this? Why is this done? It's again, Are they any inferior to no, the no, no, no. doing That's not about priority or and priority. It's about actually the grading evaluation system. Why? Why they have are the, the 10% British. So if, if they, they go hard? if they go to Cambridge system, their evaluation system is different. Of you course. know, here we have first div, no, which you get uh, like with Cambridge the 60%. Cambridge is not hmm? giving them excess marks. No, but you Why know the, the evaluation the evaluation standards are different. Shouldn't be uh, that difference. I do agree with that, but. Again, there is another problem. Those O-level, A-level students, they perform better, but they do appear in the SAT exam and then they go to LUMS and abroad somewhere and they perform better. But when they come to our institutions, they have so difficulty. So is it a punishment? Because I sort of, that. Sort of. I did my O-levels and I'd like to share my story here on TV today. I had a 10% or something reduction, which was heartbreaking. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm so glad I'm venting today and I hope there are changes brought about and students currently doing O levels do not fear this disparity and victimization I'd say. I hope so. The, the federal uh, you know, minister for education is working on it. Probably he's trying to bring a single curriculum. So while we go for this, all these things will be adjusted in one well, way Sajid or the other. Sajid you're at a powerful position. I hope you can uh, send in some suggestions. Sure. Why not? Right. Um, I would, I would. We believe in you. You've had tremendous exposure, and I'm sure you'd understand this problem. Right.
I I did well in life. I'm fine. I'm talking about the ones who are going through right. this. Students have who are going to face this, face the music now. <laughs> well, so Mr. Brendan, tell us something nice about Pakistan. All the good things. Five things. Things to do in Pakistan. Things if to do in Pakistan. Yeah. Um, well, certainly, I would recommend traveling in the northern areas. Um, yes, more traveling. Then. More traveling. Uh, uh, trying as many different uh, cuisines as possible, different dishes oh, as wow. possible. Oh, wow. Well, it doesn't look mixes. like that you eat much, but <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, do, I certainly do eat a lot. <laughs> good, good metabolism. Yes, yes. <laughs> right. Um, um, uh, meeting as many different people as well, I think. Well, Australia is, has a culture, a diverse culture in terms mm. of ethnicities. That's right. Well, that's a very different thing between Australia and Pakistan is that Australia is culture is all kind of the same all over the absolutely, whole country whereas absolutely. in Pakistan you have different cultures from you know the different regions and that's something very unique right. well, something that's very different anyway. so okay uh, let's say somebody's just travel is going to travel to Australia what mm -hmm. things would you recommend what would, uh, I would recommend number that, one uh, they would certainly start in Sydney and travel along the coast up the north up the north in Queensland right. and things right. and I would recommend going into central Australia right to the outback and uh, um, Uluru and some of those things there yeah. right so yeah. it's the beach life. No, the beach life, but also the, the center of Australia is a very beautiful and unique uh, right. place as well. Right. The desert. So I'm going to show you a few images of Australia and Pakistan very intelligently. Like I always say, we pick up these images and we uh, try and uh, show some of these images which are similar. That's very tricky of us. Let's see them. So you saw the similarities, well that was Australia and Pakistan, you could not tell the difference because we're smart at doing our job. <laughs> right, so I'd really like to thank you Sajid Saab and I hope you take up my recommendation yeah, sure. because we don't want to dishearten students, the future of Pakistan, they're brilliant, Pakistanis have high IQ and I take pride in saying that and that is a fact. Well thank you Mr. Brendan That's and welcome. I hope you enjoy for how as long as you stay in Pakistan and uh, good to have you in Pakistan, to have a good teacher in Pakistan indeed. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. See you next week, same time. Keep watching Discover Pakistan.